What's up everybody, my name is Sawyer Hartman and today in order to help you get better at editing photos, I'm actually going to be professionally editing three of your photographs for you. These are not photos taken by me on professional gear with crazy settings, but yet photos taken and submitted by viewers just like you. So without further ado, let's show you what your photos can become with just a little bit of editing. This is my third cup of coffee so far, and it's only 9 a.m. What's up everybody? Welcome back to a brand new editing your photos video. My name, if you're brand new here, is Sawyer Hartman. This is a series on this channel where you submit your raw photos, and I actually edit them for you right here on the channel to show you one, how I would edit the photos, and secondly, to give you a little bit of promotion and love. By the way, if you like the coffee mugs, I started the Inspirational Coffee Cup Company, a new company and website dedicated to bringing the highest quality, cool and funny, and yet motivational and also relatable coffee mugs on the internet. So make sure to check that out because I've sold a few and they're actually pretty fire. I use them myself. Anyway, editing is hard to learn and the easiest way to learn is to watch someone else do it. So today I'm going to be editing three photos submitted by you guys in some of my particularly favorite styles at the moment so that you can learn how to edit them as well. Hope you enjoy. Let's kick off photo number one. Photo number one is someone on an illegal hike here in Hawaii, although this photo is going to color incredibly. First off, let's do a little bit of planning. How do we want this photo to feel? I don't really like this much green in our image, so we know we're gonna be taking a lot of that green out. And besides green, there's not a lot of colors going on in here. So it's gonna be a darker, moody photograph, but I do really wanna protect these skin tones. So let's do a moody photo edit with good skin tones. The first thing I would do is just try to properly dial in the white balance, which there we go. You can use his hat for white balance. Very, very, very simple. Now we're gonna try to actually balance out some of this image. The first thing I wanna do is save all of the shadows on his body and face. So I'm gonna bring up my exposure about a stop and a half just so that he is properly exposed. I'm gonna bring down the highlights and the whites while also messing with the shadows a little. Where I do the majority of my editing is actually right here in the color curves. I'm going to go ahead and make my S color curve that I always make on all of my edits. We're gonna do this on the red channel, the green channel, and also the blue channel. You can see as we do it to each channel, they start balancing each other out a little bit. Okay, wait, starting to come along. You can, ah, okay. You're starting to see it actually like emerge from itself. And this is starting to get a little better. I can, I can deal with this right here. All right, these tones are looking fine. I'm perfectly fine to move along right down to the hue, saturation, and luminance. This is where a lot of the edits will start to become apparent. We're really only going to be affecting the orange, the yellow, and the green because those are the only colors that are in this entire photo. So we can take the orange and let's dial this in until we get the right skin tone color we want. You can also see the yellow affects all of these branches and stuff. We're gonna start yellowing out the oranges and the greens. So again, I will adjust the skin tone oranges and saturation until the skin is saturated correctly. And then yellow, I will bring lower. And we're already starting to get moodier. And with the green, I go all the way and oh my God, the moodiness is starting to appear. Notice the red tints in these highlights here. I can just go back up to my color curves, grab the red and start to balance that out a little bit more. Our last slider here is luminance. So for luminance, I'll take it down so that he doesn't look like he's glowing. Where it is, green. We will darken it. Let's go ahead and darken green to about there. You can see the before and the after. The problem is I'm starting to see a little bit too much purple tints. So I'm actually come down to the bottom where you see shadows and I'm gonna start dialing it in all over again. As you can see, this is extremely close. I just wanna take some of this red tint out of it. And there is where the red tint was. And just like that, it's postable. Wow, this is a banger. All right, so the second photo we have is just an absolute incredible composition. I mean, look at all of the negative space that draws your attention straight to the subject. This is an extremely incredible photograph. 
Now let's bring it to life. So here we are at our decision making time again. What do we want to do with this photograph? Remember that we're always trying to create a vibe with our photographs. So for this image, I really want this to feel like it's the first light of the day. I really want to make that cloud behind our photographer bright orange and make this image look like it was the first bit of sun coming up over the horizon, illuminated this mountain peak, and here's where we are. To start off this edit, let's go ahead and affect our white balance. And I'm actually going to bring it too warm. I'm going to go to like almost 9,500 Kelvin because remember, I want it to look like sunrise. Now let's go and actually balance the image. I'm going to bring down the exposure, bring up the contrast a little, same thing with highlights and whites and shadows and blacks. And by separating these, I'm creating dynamic range. That's what I'm doing here. I'm making sure nothing's overexposed and I'm trying to create as much dynamic range as possible while still making the image look real. Next stop is going to be our color curves, but this time we're actually gonna do something. I want this image to feel like old film. So we're gonna go to the RGB, which is the Luma curve, and we're gonna just click our points like we're making an S curve, but I'm going to take the tail of it and curve it up. Notice how in the shadows of the image now are getting matted out. I'm going to mat the hell out of this image in pursuit of making it look like film. Let's move over to RGB and make this little S curve that I've been shoving down your throats for forever. I do this on almost every edit I do. This is my starting point. Now, one thing I'm noticing here is in the shadows, it's still looking a little orange or warm. So I'll go back to the red and I'll create another point and see how that only affects the midtones. Now we're back down to the hue, saturation, and luminance, and let's just go crazy. Let's find the perfect shade for the orange mountaintop. I'd say right there is starting to look like sunrise, believably on that mountain. The yellow affects the ground and the green even, so let's move it a little right so that green looks true and real. And then again, these are the only two colors we're going to be messing with, so let's go down to orange, saturation, and finally, luminance, see orange, wow. That's cool, but too far. So let's find a nice middle ground. And then for the yellow, we will bring that up to create a little contrast. Honestly, that is damn near exactly what I had in my mind. But the photo overall, this looks like it could be any time during the day. And now all of a sudden, boom, it's sunrise. We can even take the white balance a little bit more to the right if we want and just have fun with it right? This is the first light of the day. And that, ladies and gentlemen, does it for image number two. So back in our planning phase, what do we want to do with this image here? It is an incredibly beautiful image, but obviously the first thing that's got to go is this massive bush that is distracting me from the waterfall. Say no to bush. The second thing that I noticed about this image is because of Instagram's crop, I'm going to have to go to a four by five crop which means if I want the whole waterfall in, she is way far below this third line. So to fix this, we're obviously also gonna have to move her up the waterfall. Should be easy enough, but let's not overthink it. This obviously is not going to be a job for Lightroom. So let's go ahead and hit Command E and open this image in Photoshop. Now, if you know nothing about Photoshop, that's perfectly fine. Just watch, pay attention, and try to like keep up because you're gonna wanna learn it very, very soon. So here we are in Photoshop. The first thing I'm gonna do is duplicate my layer to make sure I don't mess up the only copy I have. Using my stamp tool, I am going to actually start painting out this bush. Now, I do not claim to be a Photoshop professional, so if I'm doing this wrong, I apologize. Um, just get over it. I don't really know. It works for me, and that's our only goal as a photographer is to get it to work. So I'm just gonna keep selecting water like I am here, and we're just gonna paint this out. Okay, there we go. So that big arm of the bush is gone. Then I'll just go down here and any other little pieces of grass like this one, let's just go ahead and take them out just so it's nice and clean and it doesn't matter. We're gonna crop the image anyway. All done. That is uh, painted out decently. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and let's just crop the image as if it's Instagram so we can begin to see what we're working with. I want the majority of this waterfall to still be in the image. Oh, what is happening? What I'm going to do next can actually be quite tedious, but I'm going to cut her out, paint over the background, and then lift her up in the frame to get her in a better position for the photograph. To do this, all I'm literally gonna do is select like I am right now. Make sure her hair is selected. We can always go back and fix this later. Everything looks selected. So we are going to go ahead and make a layer mask out of this. 
which means now when we close out the background, our girl is still there. Now let's just take her and move her up until she's at that one third line for the crop, which is probably a little bit lower than right there. So there we go. We've got the second girl and the first girl behind her. Now we're gonna go back and literally do the same thing we did to get rid of the bush. We're just gonna paint her out like, like she never existed. All right, let's go ahead and throw our girl back in. Honestly, the image is already looking infinitely better in my own opinion. The last thing I'm gonna do is add in a little bit of atmosphere. I'm gonna go up to the top, I'm gonna select a fog brush pack that I have, and I'm gonna go ahead and just paint that in down here at the bottom. And then I just move the fog layer right in between the waterfall and the girl. Click Apple S and we are back into Lightroom. So now that we're back into Lightroom, I'm just gonna cheat a little and go over to my Leica Looks preset pack, grab Old Faithful, and use this as a base. I'll then just start editing out some of the green haze, changing the white balance so that it looks more real, and adjusting the basic balance. I can go back down to the hue, saturation, and luminance. Are there any colors in this image I'm not a fan of? Yeah, the green on the hillside, so I will bring that down in the green and yellow. Maybe I can even bring up the hue in the orange to really try to get some of that clay dirt to show through on the mountain. And this is our before, and here is our after. Photoshop is one of those programs that can seem so daunting at first, but I promise you, once you get in and start messing with it, you'll really start figuring it out quite quickly. If you would like to see me do any Photoshop tutorials in the future, please leave them down below in the comments as I myself am also learning. But as for this video, that pretty much wraps it up. I really hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I make new film and photography related videos every single Sunday and would love to have you here. Also, do not get down on yourself on your road to learning photography and photo editing. It is a challenging, rocky, and bumpy road and trust me, even when I look at the photos I edited six months ago, I cringe. We get better every single day through actually capturing, editing, and practicing our craft. So whatever you do, keep your head up, get out there and start taking some photos today. But before you go, remember, stay motivated, stay inspired, and never stop creating. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.